Social license and its role in shale energy development needs to be understood in the context of the history of the mining industry. Um, mining, particularly in the 60s and 70s, um, had a, a number of protests um, in countries outside the United States. Um, and those protests largely became, came because residents felt like they didn't have any say over what was happening, um, minerals being extracted without benefit to them, and oftentimes some, some rather bad practices in those communities. Um, so it had roots in a corporate social responsibility model in which companies were trying to um, create a good relationship uh, in the communities to avoid protests and to avoid direct action. Um, and it would, was a chance for them to maintain legitimacy and access to those resources um, and protect the reputation of the companies. It's now grown outside of mining to almost all, um, all extractive industries. Um, and in terms of shale, the idea is that oil and gas companies not only need the, the approval of people who, the, whose land they're on, um, but also the approval of people broadly around energy. Um, they need approval of, of regulators and, and other community members um, to avoid protest and to some extent to avoid stricter regulation. Um, so they've enacted good neighbor policies, philanthropic practices in the communities in which they work, um, more protective practices, particularly around environmental issues. Um, but they've also advertised the benefits they have, so they're seeking to build relationships um, in the communities in which they work. Some people look at this and see it's more of a greenwashing, um, that it's very small efforts compared to the larger benefit that the companies receive from the action uh, in the communities. Um, it's a relatively new concept in the U.S., and in the context of, of shale in the U.S., one big difference is property rights uh, and the leasing practices. Whereas in other countries, uh, landowners may not own the minerals um, around them. In the U.S., private land ownership and private ownership of the subsurface rights means that there's a contractual obligation that the companies have to fulfill um, that sets out those practices. So in the U.S., it's mostly in the form of good neighbor policies uh, and protective regulatory practices that meet or exceed um, state or federal regulations. So one important part of the social license in the U.S. context, because of this, the way that the, the private property rights works in the U.S., um, is that companies are really looking to establish a reputation, a strong reputation, and that helps them attract corporate investment. It helps them with future leasing opportunities, um, and it does go towards helping them think about what are the, the regulatory systems that would most benefit them and gives them an argument space uh, for making their case and that legitimacy of their, their practices.